Hello and welcome back to the Cybersecurity Crash Course for Small and Mid-Sized Businesses. Today, we are talking about website security. This is Lesson 11 in our 12-part Cybersecurity Crash Course. If you have not watched the previous lessons, be sure you go back and check them out. There's lots of tips and demos and activities in there that will help you dramatically improve the security at your small or mid-sized organization. Also, before we start talking about web security, be sure that you check out the companion guide at the link there. Any links or tools that we talk about will be listed in the companion guide, as well as some activities, some definitions to help you in your cybersecurity journey for your small or mid-sized organization. So let's talk about some web security issues that you should consider when you are hiring a web hoster developer or if you're do considering doing it yourself. There are security concerns that you have to think about when you are setting up or preparing for a website makeover. Security should always be a top of mind issue, especially with websites, because there is a potential for them to be breached. There's the potential that attackers will try to gain access to them. So when working on website changes or considering if you should hire a developer, or if you should handle it internally and have some of your staff do it, be sure that security is something that you think about and you give preference to. Some of these security concerns to think about when working on a website are what kind of data will be collected from web visitors with all of the new regulations like CCPA and GDPR. All of that information you collect, even if it's analytical data for web improvement purposes, IP addresses, headers, cookies, all of that is personal information and should be protected. And you have to make sure that you're taking the proper steps to protect that data. Next thing you have to think about, is PII going to be stored on the website? Is there a database on the back end of the website where that PII might be stored? Because if that database is compromised, an attacker could gain access to that PII and exfiltrate it, sell it, whatever they want to do, and that could get you in trouble. Another issue we see is where is the website going to be stored? Is it going to be stored internally on your own server? We've done many incident responses of websites that have been compromised to gain access to those servers and those servers has been, have been used to pivot further into the internal network. So if you are planning to store your website internally on your own server, it should be segmented into a secure zone of some kind so that if an attacker is able to compromise the website, gain access to the server, they cannot pivot further into your network and wreak havoc. Is the website going to be connected to your network? It's another important security consideration. And if it connects back to your internal network in any way, there are extra security precautions that need to be put in place. If you have a database that reaches out to a database inside your network or inside, even if it's a cloud part of your network, just because it's in the cloud, quote unquote, doesn't mean it's not part of your network. You probably have some kind of communication between there that could allow for pivoting. And the final consideration is where will your website be hosted? If you're going to host it internally, okay. If you're going to host it at a web host, okay. Is that going to be a shared web host where an attacker could compromise one website and gain access to the backend server for many websites? Or is it going to be a virtual private server so that we don't have that sharing issue? There's There are many, many options. These are all things you should take into consideration as you plan out the website process. As you are developing your website, planning a website out, a few things that you have to have and you should keep top of mind and be sure are included no matter what package you get or what developer you use are, first of all, you need an SSL or TLS on the website to make the traffic secure, to be sure that man in the middle attacks are not able to be conducted. You need to be sure that you can set up email authentication and other security controls that we've talked about. Um, SPF, DKIM, and DMARC. We talked about all of those in great detail in the last lesson. Be sure that the upkeep and the updates are going to be handled. Whatever web platform you use, the web solution itself will need updates as well as the server that is hosting it. And general management, responding to comments, updating plugins, all of those kinds of things are something to think about. You can't just build a website and forget about it. So some questions to ask the web developer or the organization that you are thinking about having them handle this for you are, 
is TLS and SSL going to be included in the plan? Because sometimes it is not. You have to purchase this additionally. It can be quite expensive. There are low cost and even free ways to get SSLs. But if you're going through your web hosting provider or you're having the developer do this for you, it could be expensive and that is something to think about. Be sure that you know who is going to set this up. Just because an organization provides you an SSL in a web hosting server doesn't mean they're going to set up the SSL for you. So that's something else to consider. Next, you're going to want to know if the business can use the same email address as the domain of a website. Most companies want their email domain to be the same as their website. If so, can you set up SPF DKIM and DMARC? Again, there's a wide spectrum of hosting services. Some allow this, some don't. You just want to be cl clear what you have before you get into it. Make sure you spend time investigating, asking, and being sure that whatever service you use includes software that is up to date. This is not only the web software, if you're using WordPress for an example, if you're using Wix or any kind of web application tool, that should be updated, but also the operating system of the server should be updated, any plugins and apps that are on the server that help the communication process. And you should be sure that you know who is responsible for maintaining this. Some web hosting providers will maintain this for you, some require you to do this, and it's important that you understand that. And finally, you're you should ask, when the website is live, how can changes be made? Inevitably, you're going to want to make changes to your website, and you should understand the process for making those changes. Do you have to go through a developer? Can you make these changes yourself? These are important things to understand. When it comes to website security, the OWASP Top 10 Security Vulnerabilities is a great measuring stick. Whatever vendor you use, you can ask them, are you aware and are you securing your platform based on the OWASP top 10. The OWASP top 10 are the top 10 vulnerabilities in web applications every year. We can't get into all of them here because it's like a whole nother course on its own, but you probably want to take a little time and go check them out and be aware of the, those common security vulnerabilities so that you can ask your provider or your developer how they are mitigating the risk of including those vulnerabilities.